Good evening. And this is really a cool group. This is a cool space. I love Braintree. This is awesome. So what I'm here to do is talk to you about how to get girls engaged um, in technology. I'm um, helping this uh, organization, Tech Girls, get off the ground in Chicago. We've actually been here like a year and a half, um, but they're looking to expand. And I just want to share some information uh, and get it on your radar. So, and these are the things that I'll be going over, why we're doing this, our impact, etc. So, and the big why is um, almost 5 million workers in core IT positions. This is for last year and about 25% of them are female. Now, this is an improvement from the prior year where it was 24%, but still got a ways to go. <coughs> and we've done research into, you know, how do you get girls and women engaged in technology? And our research suggests that if you wait until high school or college, it's too late. You know, they've already closed that gate off in their brain. Uh, as far as technology being something they could get into. So that's why we target the middle school space and middle school for us being roughly grades six to eight. So I'm gonna go a little bit over last year's data and our years are um, like in this case, July 2017 to June 2018. So we started off 2012, um, number of girls served, uh, very low. Uh, we did 5,000 for the last calendar year. We're already past 10. Um, we started with 11 workshops and now uh, last year we had 250. This uh, year I believe we're at least at 400. Um, national growth, um, you can see Chicagoland, um, also North Carolina, uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Tennessee, and more recently, we're making inroads in New York and Denver. So, and this is my favorite um, fun fact. And, and it says that four-fifths of the girls surveyed after going to one of our workshops thinks maybe there's a career for me in technology. And we do this by our, um, our workshop uh, concept called Tech Shops in a Box. We're tech girls with a Z. So we have tech shops with a Z. Everything ends in a Z. Um, so we created this, and I'll go into it a little more, um, but our idea on, on this is it's created by industry volunteers, taught by industry volunteers, free to the girls, curriculum is free to anyone who wants to access the website. And there was a question earlier, and what I like about Tech Girls, and maybe the difference between Tech Girls and Girls Who Code or Black Girls Code is we do a lot more tech topics than coding. We have a lot of design, we have engineering, we have robotics, we have data mapping, um, podcasting. We also have a lot of coding, <laughs> I'll admit that. But we try to have a really broad spectrum of tech offerings to help show girls that tech isn't just coding. So, and our next milestone by the end of the next year is 20,000, but I think we'll make it. So again, our, our, um, our, our claim to fame is our tech shops in a box, which is a workshop. Um, it always has hands-on components for the girls. Um, free, everything we do is free for girls. Basically three hours, um, although we do have a week-long um, curriculum for su a summer camp format, or it can be a spring break, um, using the Arduino. So, um, Normally we looked at 15 to 20 girls. I think really 10 to 15 is more a sweet spot, but that can depend on the topic that's being taught. And who does it? Anybody. Um, tech professionals, people like yourselves. Um, you know, college students, I've had a couple sororities, uh, DePaul and University of Chicago over the last year conducted a workshop. They had a great time. Not so much high school students in the Chicago area, um, but I'd like to do that. Parents, after school groups, a um, uh, few teachers in Chicago public schools and in the suburbs are using the curriculum for after school tech clubs. Because if, especially if a club is an hour, you can do a workshop, you know, over three weeks or something like that. So, um, what are the materials we provide? Um, workshop plans, 
Everything is online. Uh, we give you timing for like how long a part of a topic should take. You can always, you know, play with that. Um, we have a full slide deck for all of our curriculum topics, um, exercises, hands-on, and advice, because we know for some people it's not something that they do on a normal basis. A little more on our curriculum, we, we tend to put it in this PDF um, format. It's got a link to a slide deck, and it's got links to software, especially um, a lot of what we do is open source uh, software or free software, so we'll give you the links, or here's, you know, you have to download Marvel app and create a login. Teaching tips, extension activities, quite often we have some girls that really get fired up by a given topic, and so there's suggestions of things they can do after the workshop is over. So, um, ways to get involved, um, you can register as a volunteer, you can, which gives you access to all of our curriculum. Again, we've got curriculum on, I think we're at 55 now, they keep adding things. One of the popular ones is uh, data mapping uh, for humanity. Um, Alvin has taught that one and it's very uh, popular. They're also um, tell your story with infographics. I mean, girls don't tend to have access or information about a tool like that. So that gets them real fired up. There are uh, a real broad range of, of topics, podcasting. Um, so signing up gets you access to curriculum and you can download them all. Um, what we don't do for, however, because we are also are a small nonprofit is we don't, while we have curriculum on Arduinos and Raspberry Pis and micro bits and all these good things, we don't provide that, those items for you. So, you know, we're, we ask people to think about how much they want to spend when they do a workshop. And also expertise. I mean, I have some um, women that teach workshops on a topic that they don't know as a way for them to start learning it. One wanted to learn Python, so she taught a Python workshop, you know, which kind of forced her to start learning it. And also for people that are, again, not familiar with, how do I even do this? Um, there's a lot of overall information, what we call our playbook, tips and guidelines, um, advice on how to teach. Uh, really, I think there's everything in there that you might want to know. We also have a 14-minute uh, video on our YouTube on how to run a, a workshop. So if you're interested or you work with somebody who might be interested, um, the process is to choose a date and really a date and a topic. Um, give us a month or two. A, a month is fine. We have found that Saturday mornings or afternoons tend to be the sweet spot for getting enough girls to be able to attend. Um, but after school and definitely school holidays during the day, you know, for Chicago public schools, there are a lot of days when um, the students are off, but the school is still operating and parents are looking for things for their girls to do. And also, if you need help, um, we, can, we can do that. Uh, we can provide um, recruit instructor assistance, um, maybe help with the space. Some of our instructors um, work from home, and so they don't have a, a location. Um, neither do we, but we help. <laughs> we can help find that. We generally suggest a one adult to every five girls ratio so that everybody, you know, kind of keeps up with the program, as well as, um, you know, helping sign girls in and that kind of thing, just some of the mechanics. Um, at the end, we, we have surveys for the girls and surveys for the instructors. You know, we ask how many girls um, that you taught because that contributes to our numbers. Any feedback on the curriculum? Um, all of our curriculum is developed by folks like you. And we have one person on our team that um, kind of puts it in our, you know, branding, our format. And um, she also reviews the curriculum periodically, make sure the links in the slide deck still work and all that good stuff. Um, and we also invite people to, um, you know, do a blog post. Um, other ways to get involved is to help develop curriculum. We had an uh, engineering professional in Chicago, and she said, well, we don't have any, any topics on engineering. And so we said, why don't you create one? 
and she created two, and she's taught them both. So, um, you know, that's another uh, way to get involved. And again, helping, helping us spread the word about Tech Girls. It's, I know, one of many programs available to youth. Um, but I, I think our, you know, the fact that it's free and it's all done by volunteers, we try to make it an easy lift for organizations. And I also try to recommend it as a, a give back opportunity. You know, show girls why you love what you do and just give them a taste of it. I think that's, um, it's very meaningful. Last but not least, we have a Women in Tech Summit. Unfortunately, the one in Chicago was earlier this month. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Um, and what I like about them, there's five regional ones, um, and all profits go to support uh, Tech Girls. If you're going to be in Denver or in Raleigh in the fall, we will be having them then. And we haven't come up with our schedule for next year. So this is, uh, you know, some links. Um, be glad to answer any questions. Uh, hi, my name is Andre. I'm actually a member of several women meetups, and they encourage guys to attend. So don't be discouraged if you're a guy to uh, mentor at a, a workshop for high school girls, because I do it all the time. Um, just, it's about inclusivity. Um, and uh, I was wondering if you were partners with uh, Chick Tech or Nita Borg or Women Who Code, which are the aforementioned groups that I am a member of. I am a big fan of Brenda Wilkerson. I've known her for years and years, and she's now with the Nita Borg. So, yes, um, we have been at Chick Tech events, and they help. Um, publicize our um, workshops. They're great people. Um, I don't remember the other ones. Chick Tech. Oh, Chick Tech, yeah. We've, um, we have uh, also spoken at Chick Tech. I've been to one of, only one of their meetups. Um, but we do keep in touch because, yeah, we know that's what we need to get the word out. We're always trying to get people that are interested in, you know, paying it forward, I guess. So thank you. Thank you. Um, do you have any advice for like educators working with children on how to encourage girls to um, be more interested in tech or more encouraged to go into tech jobs, especially if they become discouraged by thinking that they, they just aren't good at it? Yeah, I, and I, I think one thing, one way that we get around it is our variety of topics. Like the, you know, info, tell your story with infographics or there's one mapping for humanity. One thing that we find is girls and I, th I think women in general, not that guys don't, um, like to do things that are going to make the world better, help somebody. So, for example, with the designing mobile apps, sometimes we give them a theme. And one was, you know, how would you reduce uh, food waste in your family and your, you know, neighborhood? So there's this one girl created this smoking app. She had it all these layers down. And if you have broccoli in the fridge, here's some recipes for broccoli, you know. That is amazing. Um, and I think also, so, you know, some um, teachers in middle school are using our curriculum, like I said, for after school clubs. I think that helps too. I know in Algonquin, they have the eighth grade girls teaching the sixth and seventh grade, uh, um, grade girls. And I think that's powerful. And I, that's why I'd like to get more high school and college girls involved too, because it's nice to see somebody not that much older than them having a good time. And to me, the double indemnity, I, I love to have these things in church basements. I love to have these things in libraries. But it is smoking hot to have these type of events at a place like this. Because girls get to see this, and they're like, whoa, you know, I got stuff on the walls. And you know, it's, it's not your basic cube environment. You know, when I worked, I worked at the city of Chicago's IT department, I would never have girls come there, because it was. <laughs> wasn't cool, you know, um, but, uh, and that has a big impact. So I love having events at places like this. Cool. We're going to take one from the document. Um, how often do you have a uh, revised curriculum content or like what drives an update to update curriculum content? 
we have somebody pretty much dedicated to it and she kind of schedules going through each one. But she also um, depends on input from people like you that or people that have run the workshop and said, you know, this link didn't work. Here's what it should be. Or, yeah, so it, it's, I can't say that they're revised every three months or anything, but definitely they're looked at at least a couple times a year. Thank you. Sort of following up on the question about sort of the other organizations, <clears throat> do you have any you know, official practices or sort of goals for kind of handoff for girls who are sort of, I guess, age out of your curriculum and like getting them directly, instead of just saying, and then good luck, like getting them directly involved with that next level so they don't just kind of fall off it's like, oh, I'm excited, but where do I go now? We do. We do. Actually, the, the, this organization was founded in Philadelphia. And in Philadelphia, they have a high school teen advisory board, which is girls that have gone through the programs. And one thing that they do is they vet the curriculum. Before a curriculum goes out, they've looked at it and, you know, yeah, that'll be engaging or ooh, ooh, not so much. Um, we don't have that. We only have that in Philly right now. I'd love to get it going in Chicago. Um, uh, sorry, you have a question? Sure. What are some other organizations or contacts or like people who have spaces like this maybe that you're looking for here in Chicago to be able to scale your programs that maybe this community can help you with? I would love to find um, a, a place like this because for some of our, you know, ideally these things can be done in a tech lab, although not all of them are hands-on all the time. But we can also have workshops where girls bring their own devices. I like that and I don't like that because sometimes a girl doesn't have a laptop. So if, an, if somebody's doing that, I, I ask them to have, have one or two extra. Here, I'll bring mine, you know. Because um, I don't want somebody who wouldn't have a laptop or a, an iPad not to be able to, you know participate but I, I am always looking for locations and I've had a few over the last six months that have dropped out um, when I have a teacher who's an independent or you know her company does not want to host a workshop but she wants to do uh, a workshop and I need a place for her to do it and I'd love for again for it to be a cool tech environment and not uh, a, not their school because they go to school Monday to Friday Ick. Um, so 1871, any, I mean, here, there's so many. Um, if you think of any potentials, please put them in the Google Doc or, or talk to me. Or I'm Joan at techgirls.org. We have a real difficult um, naming structure. And if you forget that, info. Info will also get to me. <laughs> What would you say is um, the, the limiting factor? Is it, you know, you're, you're constantly in need of uh, volunteers to run the workshops, or you're constantly in need of space to host the workshops, or you're constantly in need of, like, students to come to workshops? Or is it kind of just doesn't, at certain times, it's one thing or the other? Yeah, and I, I would say um, it, sometimes it's one thing or the other. Usually, we can get girls. Um, Sometimes it's difficult if I have an organization that wants to do it on a Thursday from 4 to 7, you know, because these are middle school girls. Their parent needs to bring them, drop them off. Three hours later, come pick them up. Um, and they may not want to hang around, you know, for three hours. So sometimes things like that, we don't get as, as many girls. Um, there are some workshops where I've had to find additional volunteers. And it, sometimes that's been a struggle because it's like, oh yeah, that's Saturday. Everybody's out of town. Um, so, uh, but I think my biggest sticking point right now is the location aspect. I forgot one thing. Any, and I should say this: any volunteer who leads a workshop or you know participates as an instructor assistant would need to go through a background check. Um, and we have the link on our website. It's twenty bucks. Um, hopefully, maybe your company would reimburse you for that, or you don't think that's a big lift. But, you know, these are middle school girls. We're going to take another question from the Google Doc. Um, how are you using data as an organization? So data on yourself, or, or data maybe that you can find um, in the civic tech world, or, or anything like that? Very poorly. Um, I would say very poorly. I mean, I, I really work for Creating IT Futures, which is the charity side of CompTIA, you know, the A-plus certification people. Um, and they do a truckload of data analysis. 
and we do keep records. We use Salesforce, so we keep track of all of the workshops and all the girls who've gone and all the people that have worked. I can't say that we are at all rigorous in analyzing that. Um, so I was actually a board member of Anita Borg, and um, a couple of our sponsors, Microsoft and Google, they are always looking to partner with nonprofits and host people, including students, to encourage them to be a part of technology. And I've actually um, been at Microsoft and Google many, many times. Shameless plug, if you know any high school girls who are interested, please sign up for GirlCon Chicago. It is June 15th um, at the Chicago Google office, which is in the West Loop. Yeah. And um, you sh I could give you a contact because they want to do another workshop like that before the end of the summer. The only thing is they just have to get enough people to sign up. I can get girls. <laughs> Given the lead time, I know, we, we do a lot of outreach. Part of the Google form of, you know, promote my workshop, after a couple days it gets on our events page. We promote the daylights out of it. Um, I also email Chicago Public Schools, headquarters STEM folks, but and it gets out on chicagostemkids.org, chicagokids.org, Chicago City of Learning. There's about four or five. Um, organizations that we use and actually I wanted to have one at my, uh, in, in March we ha we actually set a world record uh, for the number of girl the number of middle school girls coding at one time we had about 20 locations and 340 girls including one site in Colombia that at the same time of day um, across the country and Colombia um, girls were were coding and I wanted to have the one at um, at Chicago in the Microsoft office, but that was being renovated in the month of March. And I'm like, oh. they're, they're, they're done yeah, but yeah, I definitely, I like, I, I like Microsoft and, and Google. Their sites are great and they're really, they're great partners. Are we gonna do one more question? Um, I guess, can I ask two quick questions? Two, okay, um, the first one's about, um, I guess location and you know what percentage of your students are in the suburbs versus the city and then do you have an interest in growing you know either one of those areas and then should I ask the second question or wait for the second question is more about curriculum and to your point about kind of expanding the definition of technology it's not just coding or is there any curriculum that kind of um, is interdisciplinary let's say the way you know maybe an app that could be developed in the context of a social studies class that kind of thing Right, and I, I think our, um, well first I'll answer the location question. We have had some in the suburbs, not very many. Um, and I've had a problem getting locations for ones there. Um, so more have, been, more have been in Chicago. Um, and I have people that drive in from, you know, a f good ways to, to attend these things. And I've already forgotten the second part, I'm sorry. Oh, inter yeah, because um, quite often the um, mapping for humanity, designing mobile apps, you know, we give them a theme of, you know, of a, a greater, you know, doing something for a greater good. And you could even do the infographics one for that, you know, teach it that way. Instead of telling your story, tell a cause's story. Um, so I think there's a ton of applicability for interdisciplinary. Because really, that, that's part of the, the sale, isn't it? You know, it's not just technology. It's technology to do something. Um, so that's kind of what we try to do. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on and talking to us. Thank you. Thanks for listening to me. Thank you.